Hello and welcome to Super Saturdays, the comic book media podcast, where each episode we'll be focusing on your favorite comic books, TV shows, and movies to figure out if these projects will stand the test of time. I'm Damon A, and on today's episode, I'm joined by... Drew. Just Drew. Vamps it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good to have you here, Drew. Oh, pronouns he, him. Just FYI. Yes. All right. Well, without further ado... On with the show. It is good to have you on the show, Drew. I'm really excited to talk about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off and just talking about a little bit of Scott Pilgrim shit in general. So, you know, my question for you... What was your first exposure to Scott Pilgrim? Okay, my first first exposure was um, definitely when I was about 13. I remember um, basically there was like some party or something that was like for people like, you know, after you graduate middle school, they might have a little event or something. Nothing as big as high school, but you know, that kind of thing. I don't even remember what event it was, honestly. But I do remember I hit it off with someone who I had in a bunch of classes, but I never really talked to before. And we decided, oh, well, now summer's here before high school. How about we go hang out? And so we did. Um, we had like a sleepover. And this was straight up like the only time I ever hung out with this person. But uh, I remember just being at their house and like, um, and we decided to watch a movie. And it was Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And I was like, oh, I've never seen that before. Let's see how it is. I had no idea what to expect. I, I figured that this person was cooler than me and probably had good taste or whatever going in. So I was like, ooh, this is a cool movie. Probably not one my parents would be showing me or something. I don't know. But uh, I went into it and uh, I was um, I was very much enchanted by it. I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I, I was... Um, it was fast paced, had charm, personality. It was everything. I really like. I instantly became a favorite of mine. Um, I never really talked to that person again. Straight up, like we went to high school. We still had classes together. I think that we just like it was one of those things. Like you hit it off with one person, and then you just don't. And also, to be fair, I was also a quieter person then too. Was so you just said time, thanks so. for this important moment, and then boom, yeah, goodbye. goodbye forever, basically, <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there was any real thought to it. We didn't really have beef. I just think that we just didn't run similar circles. And uh, I, I was kind of on to my whole nerd shit anyways. And I think they weren't as much that type. Every time after that, I was like, hey, we're going to watch a movie. Oh, can we watch Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? It's like a really good movie. It's going to be a really fun time. We're all going to have fun with that. And uh, I, I've shown it to many people. Like, it's one of those things that like I've probably seen like maybe 10, 15 times, you know? Mm -hmm. um and i've uh i've read the comics um i believe i did so in high school straight up i, I did it for a really stupid reason i wasn't even like super into scott Pilgrim at the moment i just wanted to like write a fan fiction about some other fandom i was in where i was like oh look defeating evil exes what <laughs> if i go i should go read the i should go read the comics for uh for for stuff like that and just uh, for some inspiration and shit before you hopped into no, the realm of up, fan fiction because I just always think that's fun whenever I would have, like, a like I'm in some other fandom and there's, like, a pairing that, like, one of the characters has a bunch of other pairings that are possible. Oh, what if they have to defeat those other characters in order to get with them? It was always just, like, a goofy concept that I would have fun and, like, write a little bit about. So um, I didn't really write anything, but I did, it did motivate me to go read the comics. And it made me, I, I got really hooked on just that. I was like, oh, this is a lot different than the movie. Um, it was more slice of life and, uh, you know, um, a lot more stuff went on and I, I got very much, um, hooked onto that. I never did end up writing that fanfic, so I just got really into Scott Pilgrim itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and other than that, I never played the game or anything, but yeah. Uh, honestly, I highly recommend you play the game. The game is fucking phenomenal. It's a fun time. I fucking love the game when it came out in yeah. 2020 and you know, you know, I think I already touched on this because Soups, if you haven't already guessed it by the title, we're talking about Scott Pilgrim this episode. So this is part two of our Scott Pilgrim versus the discussion. 
in the last one we had Jay on as the co-host, but um, I, if you guys remember that or if you haven't listened to or watched it, go listen to it and watch it. But in there, I kind of talked about how like I wasn't the biggest fan of Scott Pilgrim initially. And I got to say, before we like dive in fully talking about the Netflix series and stuff, I think I finally get get it. Like, I think I finally get it. Like, I, I really do. And I'm becoming more of a fan of Scott Pilgrim. Uh, I loved the movie. I will say that. But the idea of the character and what I did read, it's making me want to go down the rabbit hole of experiencing more Scott Pilgrim stuff. My first time, like, being exposed to Scott Pilgrim, I kind of touched on it in the last episode. But real quick, I was on demand one night and I heard about the movie because Adult Swim and all that type of shit. Watched it on demand, fucking loved it. And then in 2020, when they had, like, the 10-year anniversary, watched that shit in Dolby soundtrack is so fucking phenomenal oh absolutely. my god it is i still listen to like uh to songs from that even like the shit like the quote-unquote shitty ones from sex the bomb oh they they go hard they're so fucking good <laughs> so fucking good they're really they're good for like if you're if you're into like that i think it's like more niche than what the than uh than you know envy's song was but it's still like hey if you're into like uh shitty garage band music oh i, I was I'm, I'm into that too so i got i'm like oh, this is good stuff i i feel if i were in the scott pilgrim universe i would be an unironic sex the bomb fan honestly me too because I, I like i like garage type of music maybe it's because it reminds me of childhood and it just reminds me of fall maybe that's why but like i fucking love it there's like a charm to it you know yeah before we get even further talking i just want to ask you a question are you ready to dive in, Drew. Oh, you know I was born ready. Yes. I am ready to defeat this episode seven evil exes in order to record it and jump into this. Soups, if you're listening to this, Drew was successful and defeated all the exes of the show. And this is why all you guys the, are listening to it. All the previous uh, e e previous guests, I know it's a lot more than seven, but I have actually, uh, I went out and defeated every single one of them. Yep. Uh, just so I could be here. There's like a there's like a pile of points. I'm, yes. uh, I've been putting them in the bank. That that's right. Yep. So uh, if you guys are looking for a big bank, Drew, this is the person you got to fight next. But drinks are on me. Exactly. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so Scott Pilgrim is a series of graphic novels by Canadian author and comic book artist Brian Leo Malley. The series is about Scott Pilgrim, a slacker and part-time musician who lives in Toronto, Ontario, and plays bass in a band. He falls in love with an American delivery girl, Ramona Flowers, but must defeat her seven evil exes in order to date her in peace. Okay, so Soups, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to be really transparent with you. This is our second time trying to record this episode. Last time it was like some technical difficulties. And I'm going to ask Drew a question that we kind of already touched on, but I think we were in the middle of talking about it when it started fucking up. I love talking, so I'm always ready to retalk things. I do it all the time. I forget what things that I tell people. And then I start telling them again. And they're like, you already told me this. And I'm like, well, I like the sound of my voice. What can I say? <laughs> So my question is this, um, Drew, you are a huge Hexman fan. So yes. my question is, which I touched on in the last episode with Jay, but then, you know, I did a little more digging and shit like that. There's a theory going around because Brian Lee O'Malley, he's a huge X-Men fan. That's why the X-Men logo is on Scott's jacket and all the other type of stuff. And there's like this weird theory that like, what if the Scott program world is like most of the people that are, you know, our main characters, they're just mutants. And the reason why it's just so normalized is that da -da 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 -da, they're I, mutants. I've been thinking about that. And honestly, I, I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think I like it as much like as a, as a theory, as much as like, I don't know, as, like, as much of an X-Men fan I am, like, I think a big part of the thing with Scott I think a lot of the humor is the fact that these are like very normal day-to-day -day situations that everyone's like blowing out of proportion. And I think even Brian Lee O'Malley or someone, I don't know, I don't have my sources, don't quote me, but like, I believe he said something along the lines of like, whether, um, however much of like what's going on with the video game stuff is like, it's like a lot of it's just like how Scott views the world, 
but it could also be real. Like, it really depends on your interpretation. He's not going to say one way or the other. But I think there is something to be said about how Scott is very immature and he sees the world in this way, like a lot of times, like like the whole thing of like going to, to work gives him experience points, you know, or like, True. Uh, like, like getting a job gives like, well, spoiler for the comic, he does get a job at one point. <laughs> but like stuff like that is seen as experience points or like, um, so like basic day to day situations, like he like gets any kind of like, it's like, oh, I'm getting a sword for self-respect, you know? Like it's um, so like as I do like the idea like that the world just is a little like this and people are just like you know just take it for granted because I do love those kind of over the top things and people just that's just normal for them. But that's also the thing I feel like the world of X Men does exist in entirely like the whole like the story with Marvel is that you know they are they are oppressed and their their uh, powers are like um insane like you know like the stuff that the normal people just don't interact with like i think fundamentally scott pilgrim being like a world where this is just all normalized and people just don't care it does kind of go against the ethos with x-men you know true i I still think it's a fun little theory like obviously it's it's not true but it's like fun as a theory but i think that's the thing it just kind of messes with some of the themes and i think i like scott pilgrim being its own thing i agree with you on that i would say Something about it, it's kind of a breath of, breath of fresh air being able to just hop into a world where it's just the norm. Everybody has weird powers. And going back to what you're saying about how, like, it's also whether or not Scott is just, you know, we're just seeing the stuff from his perspective. And I honestly, I agree with that, though. I think it this kind of also reminds me of, like, I remember seeing a, a video recently that I really do agree with, like, that like it was about um i think the concepts from it kind of apply to this too but it was talking about how internet kind of ruined horror you can probably find this on youtube just internet internet ruined horror but the basic idea of that video was just talking about how you have like stuff like scp the back rooms and stuff where it's a very scary concept like oh you just fall out and it's and you're in these rooms oh it's like it's terrifying just the liminal spaces but then the internet has this this whole thing where they have to over explain it like now we have to add oh like there there's different levels there's these, these, these there's these bad mm. guys here they have skill they have bars it's like the the, the over explaining takes away the scariness of those things and the thing is when you try to explain things like like in scott pilgrim which exists in kind of like the silly over the top um video gamey world you try to start explaining that stuff with like you know, like, oh, this is how why it's like that. So this is why it does take away some of the charm, some of the magic with it. Um, I kind of I, I like sitting there just like living with the fact that, yeah, it's, it's the world's just like that. You just kind of roll with it. Like, you don't have to, because even when I was 12, I remember having that exact thought. Like, I was like, oh my God, the, the person just went into, went into coins and no one cares that, like, <laughs> that Scott just murdered all these people. Like, I, that, that didn't mess with me for a while. I was like, Scott's just murdering people left and right. No one cares. And everyone just kind of walks off. And You know, um, it, it made me wonder, do, do they bleed? Like, if, if, if when they're killed or if they're, you know, whatever. Like, I know that, like, it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, if a person turns to coins, they just respawn at their apartment. Yeah. Uh, or wherever they live. But, like... Do they bleed? Like, if what if someone actually genuinely died? Like, would there be blood? I don't remember them ever specifying that. And maybe I could be wrong. Like, I, I did reread the series, like, recently. But I do not recall there being a line about, like, them respawning. I think that might have been said outside of it. But, however, the show did actually say that they do respawn. Um, so that's cool. But, yeah, I don't know. That's that's the thing. Like, like, like the fact that, like, they, that, everyone, that no one was, like, upset about Scott quote unquote murdering these people or like attacking them like everyone just like chill on to, nonchalant about it added so much humor to it mm-hmm. like the, the fact that this is such a ridiculous situation that i think trying to explain things away too much just kind of it ruins that kind of fun from a, a bit so it I'm, makes it a little too practical like it just gives yeah. too many like gives it's, too much without showing like, you. scott pilgrim is such a fun and quirky little thing on its own mm-hmm. like I, I think like it just it's fine it works fine as it, as it is like we have other stories and I love those stories that do explain more of those stuff it's just you know I agree with you it is. so with this show because we're talking about the show yeah. mostly 
so okay what was your first thoughts then i'll give my first thoughts on the show just before we get into like our deeper discussion of the show on paper okay. what what did you think of the show so far low well, based off the first season i've seen the whole thing at this point so everyone needs to know this is on the all all eight episodes so you don't want spoilers get the hell out right now yes um, we we're talking about the whole damn thing. But as I was going to say, um, Scott fucking dies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I will say, my first thoughts as I was watching the first episode, I was all very excited. I was like, oh, my God. I think I might have seen something on Twitter because I was like seeing people be like, oh, my gosh, it's not what I thought. It's not. And I was like, okay, I didn't have no, I didn't know what they meant by that. Like people being like. Because I, I really did go into this expecting a comic adaptation, which is why I made sure to reread the comics and make sure that I was like all caught up and I could compare and contrast them and stuff. But no, um, straight up, like they started the first episode. I was like thinking, oh, my God, we're really like rushing through this. Like, this is not what I was expecting. Like they like because I was like a little baffled because like they kind of like had the whole Scott dating knives thing as a side note. And I was like thinking to myself, like, is this because like. It's like people know more about grooming nowadays than like back in like, you know, two decades ago. Like, I think the whole idea of Scott being 23 and like dating this uh, this high schooler was not something you would have called out as much back then. So I just thought, OK, maybe like uh, they just sort of didn't want to touch on it as much, which I honestly was like, I was thinking, I'm like, I don't know if they, uh, like they need to do that because like they, you need to know that Scott is like, even though like the grooming plot is like controversial and stuff it does make a lot of sense for him and his mentality as like he wants to he wants to like relive his like high school stuff he doesn't want to like grow up so to him like knives is simple and easy and he just wants to be a high schooler forever exactly but it's messed up still but it does get a point across about like him as a character and i was just thinking why are we skipping over this but then then of course the ending of episode one happened and i'm like Oh shit! Matthew Mattel fucking killed him. Uh, it made a whole new meaning to the takes off thing, and I was just like, "Oh, okay." That that was. I was like, I was, I was, I definitely was into what it was doing. Though I will admit, there is a part of me that's a little saddened that we didn't ever get that like proper comic adaptation, because there is stuff in the comics I would have loved to have seen animated or like adapted in some way, like. Mm -hmm. um, like, for instance, like, um, Steven Stills is, like, still in the closet. <laughs> yeah. I, um, my first thoughts on the show so far, well, based off of the first season as a whole, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. Um, I enjoyed the vibes. I enjoyed the animation. I enjoyed what was really, like, presented to us at first. And... I enjoyed the fake out because the way the show was marketed, they made you think it was going to be a straight up comic adaption. And it was an amazing fake out. Like, you got me. You have fooled it, me. It uh, reminds me of the first episode of Invincible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, that. Literally that. Literally that. Uh, like, it just, it, it really got me. It really got me. And you know something that I have in my notes right here is that I really enjoyed how it kind of kept the within that first episode. It kept the fast paced that was in the movie a little bit, but it still you could tell, oh, it's going slower than the movie did. It, yeah. And it like it was like taking its time and expanding things in different areas. Even within that first episode, I started noticing it. And even with like how Ramona and uh, Scott first met something it just felt different it felt the same but that felt very different and oh, yeah, he doesn't even talk about pac-man I, I forgot what we talked about in the comics but yeah like you know honesty i could really buy their chemistry and relationship a little bit more so than in the movie whereas in the first like uh two books within the comics i i bought their relationship i would say like their chemistry between the two a little bit but i it was in the show it kind of like kind of drove it home within that first episode like there were sparks that type of stuff i don't know yeah the, the whole show is about like they, they, they talk about it constantly that there's sparks there were sparks from, like every like every relationship but it's interesting like whether it's gonna work out or not they're like oh but there were sparks <laughs> you know <laughs> it was very funny um and charming and i like it a lot yeah i fucking loved it my question for you though is so when it comes to Scott Pilgrim, 
uh like in general not just the show but who was like one of your favorite characters from the comics oh i uh wallace <laughs> always gonna be wallace <laughs> wallace is such wallace a messy is. gay and i love it he's very inspirational for especially for queer teens growing up you know like i was mm. watching the show i feel like i didn't really get into it like but I feel like Scott Pilgrim just a show like a, a series that speaks more to me as I grow up and I like because I think like I think like it's something that really um uh you know like when like for people in their 20s like when you're going through your own like shit because mm -hmm. I think we've all been there we've all lost people or like we've all been through breakups and a lot of times we're not always like the you know the the good party like sometimes we are like like like, it, it's kind of the thing, like, you kind of realize that you have your own flaws, and that a lot of times people are, like, uh, just immature, or want something simple, or, you know, like, and I think, like, to me, I think revisiting Scott Pilgrim, or at least, like, rereading the comics now, it, um, it kind of made me, like, think about some of my recent relationships, and it really did make me feel like I was healing. I agree. I think something that I touched on within the last episode where we talked about Scott Pilgrim is how there are some people who didn't get that message from the book. Some people kind of like glorified Scott Pilgrim for the toxic stuff, which is interesting to me. But that's a whole other conversation in and of itself. So my question for you, though, since we we're talking about the show, what was your thoughts on the way Wallace was portrayed in the show? I have, I'm not, mm, it's, it's interesting. I love, okay. I like the concept. The, the, I love the content we have with him. He's funny, he's sarcastic, like he always has. He's always he's so sharp witted, and his interaction with like Todd it was fucking hilarious. That was that was golden. I huge fan of that. It was really really fun. And I like seeing like at the end, like he gets with Mobile and stuff, which is cute what they did in the comics. That being said, um, I his relationship with Scott wasn't as um, wasn't like the way they did it in the comics or even the movie because like even in the comics like basically even when scott's like at his lowest point wallace is still there for him wallace is still like got his back he's still his bro like even like the thing is you see him tell him to like break up with your fake high school girlfriend which is like like he like he's never like he just he's doing it because he knows scott needs to do it like you're an idiot scott but i'm still gonna be here like Literally, Scott is out here having, like, getting broke up with, with Ramona, and he's like, hey, we're going out to, like, eat now. Come on, we're going. Mm -hmm. Like, he 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 has Scott in his house, but he never once is like, you're a burden to me. Hell, the way, like, Wallace shows up in Scott's life, they even show it in, like, a flashback where, like, like basically, like, Scott was, like, sitting there in, like, a class, and Wallace is just like, hey, how's it going? I'm Wallace. And then Scott goes home. And straight up, he's just standing there, and he's like, hey, your brother let me in. Where are we playing? And he's <laughs> like, oh, you're just some guy from school. You just showed up at my house. And he's like, yeah, I became best friends with your mom now. I'm now, like, you're, I'm now, we're now, like, besties. Like, you just have to deal with that. Like, which is so fun. Like, he's just, he's, like, in here. And there's also all this art of, like, Wallace, like, hanging out, like, hanging out with, like, Scott's other exes. And the way their relationship is so homoerotic, and, like, they even call each other hot all the time, like, it's kind of like a joke that they're like kind of you know like pretty gay but mm -hmm. like they're not gonna say it which is i don't know like they compare that with the show where like wallace is just like oh you're a freeloader get out of my house like wallace in the comic would say yeah you're a freeloader but yeah sure i'll get you I'll, I'll, like what do you want from the store <laughs> like <laughs> i think one of the things i like about wallace is that like he's very just honest about the fact that like scott is a piece of shit but like that's still my friend, uh, yeah. which in some areas I would say, is it, is it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my gosh. Is it kind of co-signing the actions? Maybe like a little smidgen, but at the same time though, he still isn't. Uh, I would say I liked Wallace a lot within the show. My favorite character from the show though, I would have to say Ramona. Like this oh, show absolutely. really, Ramona was able to really shine as a character. That's what I was and this being like a whole alternate universe type of take on the entire show was really interesting uh because soups like this whole show like we were talking about it kind of changes a lot of different things from the book like it, it goes on its own route right after that first episode like ramona is the show turns into a whole whodunit mystery which is fucking wild to me i would never have expected a scott pilgrim show to turn into a whole whodunit situation and ramona being like the one who's like progressing the story 
but ultimately having this whole like self-discovery type of journey it was good it was nice and you know i i loved the show a lot i did but like i think one of the th gripes i have is that i kind of wanted to have seen something more comic um accurate because i know the show the, not the show the movie is like pretty close but there was a huge chunk of shit they couldn't show because it's a movie and uh i just i don't know like i don't know i'm in between on that that's now, how i feel yeah yeah like now i know that like you know it's possible since this is a whole like alternate universe type of situation it's possible maybe a season or two later to possibly get oh okay well let's show the main universe and have it like you know adapt all the extra shit but then again i don't really think it's necessary at the same time that's that's the thing because like I literally just went on a rant about, like, how much, how, like, you know, talk about Scott's character and, like, why it's so important that, like, he had all that problematic stuff but he actually got to, like, talk. It's, like, even when you're reading the comic, like, the last two volumes or so, you're just sitting there. It's, like, I fucking hate you, Scott. Like, everyone in his life's pretty much dropping him at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very, very, um, and I don't know, I feel like, even and so, I feel like they could have driven home the redemption arc a bit more. Like, they, there's things I would have liked to have written in there. Um, like, cause I think like he does like get better, but like he mainly just goes to fight Gideon. And then it's just like, after that, it's like, oh, everything's chilled now. I, I mm -hmm. suppose I could have like, liked to see him like really, really sit down and like face some of that stuff. Cause I know I've definitely known people like Scott, like not exactly groomers, but like people who don't get outside or like do their stuff, like who are just freeloading on like their parents or whatever, or, like not doing stuff, but, like not like really working on themselves like, and i've even had that too where like i would literally i didn't go to like college for a good while because i was like scared of rejection from art school and stuff mm -hmm. like i and i needed people in my life to just tell me hey get your shit together um i would have liked to have seen scott maybe like grow even more with that because he's i mean i'm proud that he get, becomes a dishwasher but like it's still just a dishwasher like that is a very small step compared to like i i would have liked to see more maybe ambitions from him or anything but not i don't know but i don't I know just, yeah. yeah i i feel like with this show i just i would have liked to have seen scott have that redemption yeah, like i would get that yeah and they could try doing it by the end of the show season and like oh yeah he has to face his future self and i get it it's supposed to be a metaphor for him actually growing but it's like I would have rather it just been more serious in that they, regard. And I think like they dropped the ball on Scott's character is a thing. A little bit. And I think it like I I can understand what they were doing, but it's more like I just cuz Scott was a despicable person in the book. He was a terrible person. So him having that realization of how shitty he, he was he like did. it was like very like cathartic and like made a like oh you're realizing all the actions, right? Whereas mm -hmm. in the show it didn't really seem like the Scott that we're having moving forward. I don't feel like he's not going to do the same things. Yeah, like, I, the thing is, the show was very good when it came to Ramona and her exes. Like, fantastic. Like, we got so much stuff for them that we did not get originally, or, like, in the show, the, the like, the, in, in the comic, I mean, in the comic or the movie, like, the exes, like, and also especially, like, the stuff with Ramona and Roxy. That was fantastic. I love like, that. I have I'm that in my so row. I'm glad that it's no longer just like you know her bi phase. Um, it was really good, especially it came. It, it really made like Ramona will never be seen as like just oh she's just a, a manic pixie dream girl. She is her own character. She has her own. She like the thing is she unpacks her stuff in the way that the comic never had her unpack that. Mm -hmm. Like or at least like she like it, it was she did actually no I take that back she did unpack it. But we didn't really face that. Like she, she ran away, and then she came back and talked about it, which I like. But uh, she, she really got to get into the, the 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 you know the weeds of things. Like making her the main character was a really good move. Like I enjoy. Like I said, I love what this show's done. I just still wish that the original story got told. I think. Yeah, so. I think that's valid though, because um, I will say. Aside from the critiques on it that we were giving a little bit, the show is still fantastic. Oh, and yes. I think one of the things I liked a lot, like I already said, was the animation. But I fucking loved the voice direction. And you know something? I gotta say, 
Soups, if you listened to the last Scott Pilgrim episode, I kind of did not like Michael Sarah as Scott Pilgrim in the movie compared to how Scott was coming off in the books. And maybe it was because he was having the whole Michael Sarah isms in the movie, but like when it came to doing the voice acting for the show, the Michael Sarah isms weren't there. It's it was amazing. just him acting. He and this felt like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, definitely. Like they, like you, you. I wouldn't have been able to have been like, oh, that's that's Michael Sarah. Meanwhile, you watch the movie, it's like, oh yeah, that's Michael Sarah. Like I like Michael Sarah Scott. Like he is very much like he does a good job like being like awkward and stuff like that but he's also like um i don't think the movie would have been what it was without him like he's 100 like it was a very like he has the like he his performance it's not exactly what the comics was but same time though it really does drive home a lot of the comedy like i will say yeah it's like one of the best gags is still like him jumping out of the, the window. oh my gosh i fucking but, love that scene so fucking much. i yeah, love it so fucking like, much or like the way he's like like the like Albert like lesbian lesbians like he he really we're does in lesbians like, or just like the way he talks about like the Pac Man thing like he does a very good like job of being like awkward as Scott um probably not as much with the whole game video game you know like guy and also I think like the original Scott was probably more annoying you know yeah he, he was, was a lot more abrasive too. I feel like uh, Michael Sarah Scott is socially inept, but he uh, he is also like he just kind of stands there and will be inept about it like that, like you know. Yeah, I think Michael Sarah did a really good job of making Scott likable in the movie, because I think if it was another actor and they just played it straight like how he was in the comics, it would be easier for people to flat out be like, I don't like this guy. Whereas yeah. when Michael Sarah did it, it was like the way that he was playing it. I could see it taken as like, oh, maybe Scott's not that bad, right? Whereas, yeah. like, you know, in the show, I will say the show does a better job of, like, making Scott a little bit more likable in spite of him being a shitty person. But the way that he's just done, I like, I you know, I, I finally got it. Like, this, the, the show really made me understand and love the Scott Pilgrim, sh like, world even more uh, than I used to. And yeah. it's... Like, I love the just the, the, the stuff that you learn throughout it. Like, for example, Ramona's whole journey of learning that, you know, she has to choose herself and all of that type of stuff. Or even the little, like, um, the little exchange between future Scott and future Ramona where she literally tells him, I just wanted space and you've been gone for like 10, 20 years. And then he's like, oh, we're going to get back together. And then she's like, yeah, we could have 10 years ago if you would have <laughs> came back like it's just um I, I don't know i liked it I so a, my question for you is oh wait, what were we gonna say i had a funny thought you were talking about the actor i was thinking for a moment who would i think who would i try to cast to be a better actor for like who would like who would be comic actor and then it just hit me Fucking Matt Cat from Game Theory would do like the game, like the you you know like the game video game nerd annoying guy Scott. That kind of character is what Scott the Scott Pilgrim comics like. Drew, I can't even say you're lying. I really cannot I even might. say that you're I lying. You're you're, like you're that, right about if that. You put Matt Pat in there, you would have comic Scott. <laughs> like, you're not wrong about that. He would do his whole gaming stuff, and people would just like you know Scott, like Kim will just stand there and be like, I like I, if your life had a space, I would punch it, and he would just be still like sitting there smiling like that. That like <laughs> that that's the that 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 that's the guy I would. <laughs> but anyways, go back. I just I just had to say that, or else I would would have forgotten it. No, yeah. you're good. You're good. Uh, so my final question for you though, Drew, is when it comes down to Scott Pilgrim takes off. Do you think it will stand the test of time? And on a scale of five, what would you give it? Oh, absolutely, would stand the test of time. Time. Um, yeah, I would. For out of five, like I will say, like definitely, like like I'm an animation major. The animation was phenomenal. Um, I feel like I've been able to talk about the comics here, God, but like, um, I need to get back on the show shit. But um, I would say, yeah, definitely 
I would give like the animation and story and like the whole dialogue is fantastic. Yeah, I would give it a five out of five, you know, um, or if that's five stars. Okay. Um, that and uh, but yeah, like uh, I wish that Wallace was a bit nicer to Scott too. I <laughs> with that. Um, I also. Oh God, you know it's so funny to me. I got baited hard. I was out here thinking because like. Because Scott and, and Wallace have such a homoerotic relationship that, like, when they showed, like, Wallace as an old man, I was like, oh, are they, like, husbands? Is that Scott's real I name? thought that. I really thought that for a second. I thought that, like, they were going to say legally Scott did it just to get the benefits. That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, and there's also another thing I was wanting to talk about, too, was, like, I was reading about it. Because, like, the thing is with the original Scott Pilgrim comics... Brian Lee O'Malley meant, like, said that he wasn't going to like write more of them because to him, Scott Pilgrim's a story um, for 20 people in their 20s. And I really appreciate that because like, there's not a lot of stories like that. Like, I feel like Scott Pilgrim and like Agretzko, if anyone's like, seen that on like, Netflix, would probably be like, those really good like, shows that are just made for people in their 20s who are struggling. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I, think, I haven't seen the recent seasons of Agretzko. I think it fell off. But like, the first season was very good for that stuff like the whole like being your 20s um thing but that's the thing he didn't want to write more of it because he was no longer in that like age range and i think you can feel that with the movie is that i feel like a lot of what the movie was was like dealing with the fact that he went through his own divorce you know mm -hmm. like his own experiences with that because he now got to write about older scott who's like oh you mean the show his age you know and who he went through a divorce like he wrote the original Scott Pilgrim based off of people he knew. The whole reason he came up with the concept was because he was in, he was like very intrigued by the idea of um, his like girlfriend having like lovers before him and how that went, you know, mm -hmm. like the whole. So that like he took that and his love for anime and X Men and stuff and combined them to make what Scott Pilgrim is. But also like he he, had, he literally had like a gay roommate and stuff who was like based off of Wallace. He based his like mobile who shows up at the end like they off of like who his roommate ended up marrying like so there's a lot of that like it's very based off of himself and you can kind of tell in the comic that he's probably like he's he's not he wasn't a good person himself but he was going through it and trying to like you know it, it was a healing process for him and i feel like he already heals from that stuff so he doesn't really feel the need to like re uncover all that baggage that made the first scott built like the comic so in the movie, it feels like that's him reconciling with perhaps his divorce, you know, from his wife. Like, oh, you mean um, the show? Yeah, with the show. The show. I didn't mean the movie. Yes, the show. Mm -hmm. Like that, because like the whole thing with like the future Scott and like Ramona, and like her older self. Like, it felt like that was like a lot of, you know, Scott's, um, and also probably maybe Brian Lee O'Malley's like like flaws coming back into his life and causing that stuff. I don't want to assume anything about his life, but um, I did read a thing that like literally his divorce attorney, like no, not divorce attorney, his judge in his divorce was named like Scott M. Like Gor like uh, Gordon or something. Mm. So people like assume that maybe Gideon's name comes from his literal divorce, like like a judge. Mm. So I can see like that's like being part of what what he like put in there because. You didn't really see as much of the slice of life stuff with this version. It was very much like plot driven. Yeah, it was very plot driven. And I honestly liked the moments where I was able to sit down and do like a small amount of slice of yeah. life stuff. I feel like if this was a longer show or maybe even like a serialized show, we'd get more of the slice of life stuff. And I still have hope because the end credits of the show, not end credits, but like, you know, the, 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 the last yeah. scene of the show, it kind of set it up that there's going to probably be a season two. And it just makes me wonder, will the show ever, like, get more slice of lifey? I, or, and I think it even kind of sets up for us to get more backstory. Like, we'll probably get more backstory for Kim because Kim's like backstory. They touched on it like a little bit, but it's like they. Yeah. It, but it kind of was hinting that like, oh, we're gonna see more. And I don't know. I, maybe it's gonna be just spread out. Possibly, who knows? I um, hope. I hope so. Because from, the thing is, I've seen, like, an interview where he talks it like, where, I mean, I didn't see the interview myself. I think I was seeing people toast about it. But they were saying, like, oh, Brian Lee O'Malley has mentioned that he doesn't 
he feels like he wants to go off to other projects now. Like this is the last thing he, he doesn't want a season two, mm. um, which kind of like, I like, and I get that like the people are like, Oh, well, where can it go from here? And I'm like, I feel like I can think of a few things to go from here. Like, honestly, like I said, like Scott Pilgrim doesn't need to have the whole defeating evil exes to work. I'm okay. I'm, Honestly, I just want to see, like, that slice of life stuff, because half the comic, like, most of the comic follow goes slice of life. Like, the, the exes only show up for a little small part. So, like, hell, like, there were only a few pages when, like, Lucas Lee's fight. Like, a lot of the exes would just kind of show up, do a little thing, and leave. Like, may, most of the book was just straight up, like, Scott chilling with friends. Like, mm-hmm. I would have liked to see where, like, this story can go, just chilling with friends. Especially, like, now we have all the exes just live in life like possibly personally i can see places it could go but if they're not interested in doing that i'm not gonna force them to like i said i still wish i had that like true faith comic ad- adaptation i don't know i think this is brian leo madley's way of just saying like hey if you want to read the comic or read the comic this one is like an alternate sequel almost it's like the best we yeah. could get to like a, a spiritual sequel to the whole thing yeah. i would say my rating for this show is I'd say five out of five. This will stand the test of time. I believe the animation is fantastic. The fucking music is even like amazing. And the voice acting, every single person on the damn cast brought their A game and nobody was slacking. I would say the trailers kind of didn't really do anybody justice for their uh, performance because every single person in there was fucking fantastic. And even Scott, um, even Michael Sarah, like, he didn't sound like Michael Sarah, and I loved that. Uh, but, you know, I just really want to ask you guys, Soups, how, yeah, what were your thoughts on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off? Be sure to let us know on Instagram at Super Saturday's Podcast, TikTok at Super Saturday's Pod, and Twitter at Super Saturday PC. Your messages and reviews can make their way on the show. This was Super Saturday's. I'm Damon. Yeah, this is Drew. And where can the soups find you, Drew, if you want to plug some socials? Honestly, Vampsid, V-A-M-P-C-I-D-E on Twitter and most things. I haven't really, I've been meaning to, um, I don't really use social media that much these days. Um, I've been meaning to set up a new art account because of the fact that I'm an art student. I just, uh, I don't know, social media kind of drags me down, makes me upset. So... Honestly, that feels uh, you on that times 10. Social yeah. media is a lot of different things. But you know what? See you next Saturday, Soups. <laughs>